bug effect to make it more stunning using both the shader and VFX graph. So without any further talk, let's start creating. I create a folder named VFX and I create a visual effects graph asset inside it. I place it inside the scene and adjust its position and rotation. I have also created a white rectangle with rounded corners and I'll be using it as my raindrops. Open up the VFX graph. Now in here I want to set the spawn rate to 1 million and capacity to 10 million because we are going to have lots of particles. Our rain particles are going to drop very fast. So I will use the random velocity between minus 24 and minus 30. Instead of random lifetime, I use the fixed lifetime. I set it to 7. Now it's time to position the particles. I position them in a 400 by 400 square. For the randomness, I set a scale random node. I want them to be thin and long. Okay. Here is one fix we should do. Right now, if I go to the scene view, if the game object that contains the VFX graph goes out of the camera view, it stops from simulating. So we have to increase the bounce on the capacity black. And now let's test it. As you can see, it's working now. Okay. Our particles are being shown by a particle graph. Well, that's not what we want. Delete it and add a bleed particle quad. Set the smoothness to 1 and the metallic to 0. Now I reference the rectangle to the base color map. Let's see the result. Actually not what we expected. But let's try by changing the alpha of the texture and give it some transparency. Now it's much better. For the final part I add randomness to the velocity. If you pay attention now the particles are falling straight down. It's a bit domestic. Fortunately, it can be fixed by a turbulence node. Set the noise type to Perlin and mode to the absolute instead of relative. Increase octaves to 2 and intensity to 4. This affects the velocity of the particle. Now if we test it and look from above, you see the particles have different velocities and directions. However, it's very hard to notice them by now. Let's change the intensity to 10. Now going back to the scene view, they are visible. But not natural. We have to tell the raindrops to change their direction based on their velocity. So add the orient long velocity node. It's perfect now, we are getting a lot of random and the raindrops are facing the direction their velocity is now. By now our rain PFX has finished and it's time to add the fog. For the fog, first we create the VFX part and then we get into the shader part. For practice, let's create the nodes ourselves without duplicating them. First add the spawn node and constant spawn rate. Set it to 10,000. In the initialized particle block set the capacity to 40,000. We won't be needing more than that. Add the set position random block. This is exactly the same as the brain particle, but instead it has a y between 0 and minus 100. Simply add a set a scale node and use a random number for it between 10 and 100. I give it a variation in the z angle. Add random angular velocity only in the z axis and random lifetime from 1 to 8. Leave the update particle block empty. Like the rains and a lead particle core. Right now, if we leave it like this, a particle is going to pop up immediately and destroy immediately. That gives it an unpleasant and unnatural look. Instead, we want the particles to fade in and out. For this case, we need to set the alpha over a lifetime node and adjust the curve to your liking. Don't forget to add a face camera and a plane node. Ok, let's test it now and BOOM! Lots of flying clouds. Well, it's not what we wanted, so it's time for the shader part to create the look of fog for our textures instead of getting these clouds flying in our scene. Ok, let's create a shader right next to our VFX asset. In our case, we should select the VFX shader graph. 
Now as long as we have a lit quad, our shader must be lit too. Just check the lit option inside the visual effect master setting. Create a color property for the base color. Now it's time to add the main functionality. I start by a simple noise function. The scale is high right now, I decrease it to 20. We need a tiling and offset node for the UVs. Usually we use a time node when we have a tiling and offset. But because we are using VFX graph, the time node won't work. Instead, we add a vector to property that we can later change it with VFX graph. I'll show it to you when we get there. Let's connect the simple noise to an add function. In our case, one simple noise won't sacrifice our needs and won't give us enough randomness. The good idea is to combine two simple noises. However, this time I want this noise to move against the first noise by multiplying it with minus 1. I also add another multiplying node to control the speed of it. Set this to 0.1. We have added two noises so we must divide it by 2. However, I prefer 4 to regulate the intensity. I use a contrast node to create gaps for the texture. Now if I leave the texture as it is right now, you will notice the particles are square. That's not good. It weakens a realistic look for the far. We have to smooth out the edges to make it more realistic. We can use a trick here. Let's add a Voronoi noise. Set angel to 0 and cell count to 1. Offset the UVs by 0.5 in the Y. In here we need a power node and raise it to 0.003. Then use one minus node. Now multiply it by the output texture. In our case the result is too dark. Use another multiply node to intensify it. 10 should be enough. Manage the graph a little bit and save it. If I go back into Unity, you see that nothing has changed yet. That's because we have not referenced our shader in VFX graph yet. Well, let's do that and set alpha threshold to 1 and don't forget to set the color. Wait for the VFX graph to recompile and the fog appears. However, they are static, we want them to animate and that is exactly the purpose of using Paradigm. Well, remember the Vector2 property we created instead of Time node. We should pass value to it now. Move the graph aside so we have more room to work. I add a total time node. I multiply it by float value to control its speed. Add another random number to it as the base UV offset. Again, we multiply it by a random number between minus 1 and 1. Connect this to the vector to property of our shader. Now, I really like the way that it's animating now. However, you can increase this speed to see different results. It's personal preferences and I prefer the default value. There is also one more thing left to do, however, it's optional, you can skip it. I want to add a random Y rotation to the rain particles by adding a set angel node with a random number. Ok guys, that's it for this video and I really hope you enjoy my content. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Like always, I'll be watching the comment section to answer your questions. Stay safe, i see you next time.